Hello, ladies and gentlemen, that's freaky. That's freaky, that's not something you want to see in a parking lot. But hello, and welcome to a parking lot. And, and right behind the camera over there is, is, is the reveal of the vehicle I have purchased, the 41-year-old vehicle. I've talked about wanting to own a classic. There's pretty big quotation marks around the word classic here <laughs> in this case. Oh, man. But uh, I drove it out here to a parking lot, tried out learning about the clutch and stuff, getting the hang of it, getting the hang of it, going in reverse is, is kind of the toughest thing. But let's, let's, let's just reveal, shall we? Shall we reveal? Let's do a, a pan, a pan around. Can we do a pan around? Hold on, this is, this is really difficult. I'm using the heavy DSLR. There it is. Focus? Is it in focus? That right there, my friends, is my choice. <laughs> this is a 1977 Toyota Corolla. Like I said, probably the most sensible classic, quote unquote, car you could possibly find, if you can find them. They're very rare. <laughs> I've not seen too many of them, and there certainly aren't too many of them available on Craigslist, probably because nobody cares about them. <laughs> they're, they're the little economy cars that, you know, your, your mom or grandma drove back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, they really didn't stick around because people didn't say, oh, this is a fancy sports car, or oh, this is a collectible piece of machinery. And uh, <laughs> they just, you know, used them and disposed of them. Uh, except this one. This one is, is a very, at least it appears. It appears, and everything I've looked at, it is in very decent condition, very good condition, uh, mostly due to the lack of rust. Um, recently painted in 2015, I believe, or what the receipts say, recently painted. Um, this wonderful yellow color. I, the main thing I don't like about it is the yellow, the mustard yellow, but that apparently was a very popular color option for the third generation, is what this is, of the Toyota Corolla. If you need proof, do you need proof? Right there, Toyota Corolla. <laughs> uh, this, this yellow color. Um, a brown interior. The interior was redone, or at least the uh, upholstery was redone in 2015 as well. So that's good, that's nice, but it's mechanically sound. Uh, the driver isn't. I'm still learning the whole clutch and shift and clutch, 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 shift, gas, gas. <laughs> it is um, otherwise in really good, in really good shape. It is a five speed. That's a rare thing about this one. It's a five speed. It's not, the fastback is certainly a lot more uh, desirable version of this car, more commonly known in its four-door version. So I like the coupe. There's somebody else. The instant I parked it, the instant I parked it and was about to start recording this vlog, uh, that person I think is receiving driver's ed. Not in a manual vehicle though, so not in a manual vehicle. But yeah, I, it's, it's unique, it's quirky, and uh, I think it'll get the job done. And it was cheap. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. For, for what I got this, uh, it would be really difficult to find a, a Datsun S30, the 240Z, 260Z, 280Z, uh, you know, rolling shell <laughs> for the price I got this for. A, a working, mostly rust-free, definitely rust-free in the undercarriage and the, the fenders and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and that, I think that, that was a good choice. That's the, uh, that's what I consider to be the, uh, what did I call it? The sensible choice. Sure, I could have tried to find a Mustang or, a, like I said, a, a Datsun or a, even a... I started to look at the Celicas, the Celica GTs, the Toyotas, kind of the, the Japanese Mustang. Um, and yeah, I could have paid double for that, but then there'd be no budget left for customizing it, fixing it up. You know, things I want to do is replace the old kind of rusty-looking uh, pitted steely wheels and the the trailer <laughs> the trailer wheels those are 13 inch tires or wheels excuse me um but yeah it's got this really neat probably installed at the dealer roof rack which is a, a an illustration of my my outdoorsy nature 
I'm never going to put anything up there. It will never stay. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the deal, my friends. This is the deal. Let me uh, cut the recording here. I'll pop the hood and show you the beast that's under there. <laughs> and uh, then we'll head inside and I'll talk a little bit more. Because uh, it, it's spring break. And the best parking lots during spring, spring break are, are high school parking lots. So I'm glad I found this one and was driving around in circles in first gear, stopping, going, stopping, going for about an hour before I decided to start recording this vlog. But yeah, there it is. I don't, I don't have a name for it yet. I don't have a name, but uh, 1977 Toyota Corolla two-door coupe. Uh, it's sometimes called the custom coupe. I, I don't know if that's true or not. It's very confusing. But, uh, ooh, more driving lessons happening in the background. <laughs> but yeah, look, look, Good. Good's really gonna love the round headlights. He's obsessed. All of his vehicles must have round headlights. So Good's really gonna like this choice. But yeah, let's, uh, let's do a quick tour uh, under the hood. I don't know what I'm looking at. And then uh, I'll go to the inside and hopefully we can, we can wrap this up. Indeed. All right, under the hood. Am I recording? I'm recording. Under the hood is a massive 1.6 liter four cylinder inline four cylinder that is that's inline don't forget about that carbureted carbureted four cylinder engine <laughs> that's that's pretty much the gist of it it is known as the 2TC i believe yeah 2TC it's right there right there on the label where is it there it is uh 2TC engine uh the european and japanese markets for the Corolla only got the 1.2 liter. Us bloodthirsty Americans got the 1.6, which when brand new generated a whopping 75 horsepower. That's it, 75. There's not a missing digit there. <laughs> 75 horsepower, probably much less than that now. Um, but we'll see when we, when we get in there and noodle around, right Cone? Um, but the car only weighs like 2,000 pounds, so it doesn't need much more. Uh oh, there's people coming, and I'm awkward. So hold on, pause. All right, I jumped inside to be less awkward, but there was really nothing else to show on the engine because I don't honestly know too much about the engine, um, other than that it's there and it works, and I am very good at stalling it because it is a manual transmission, like I said, a five-speed. I've been just driving around here Letting the clutch out, letting things grab, moving a little bit and stopping. There's some speed bumps and hills, which are interesting to try hill starts, which are scary. The most difficult part was reversing into this spot because <laughs> it was on a little bit of an incline. Stalled it a couple times there. Um, but yeah, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a good runner and driver. Um, the interior needs some work. <laughs> it would honestly probably be a good candidate to like restore it to its like OEM original condition uh, simply because the body work is all there. But I don't think that that's the kind of project I'm going to undertake. Um, like I said, the seats, the seats are really nice and reupholstered. That's nice. Um, the dash is cracked all to hell, so I'll probably just get a dash cap or cover um, instead of replacing the entire dash, because I'm sure that's a pain in the ass. Um, the steering wheel is out of a different vehicle. I think it might be out of a Celica. I could be wrong, <laughs> but uh, yeah, otherwise... The windows need some new rubber. Uh, the passenger side one doesn't really seal all the way. Um, like I said, the dash cap, the, the rear deck. Uh, I'll just take the speakers out there. It's, it's got the old AM radio. Um, doesn't even work. Uh, I'm missing, I'm missing a, a, a center console. It's very difficult. Like I said, not that many people care about these cars. So it's very difficult finding resources and pictures, specifically of the interiors. Uh, I've seen some with... A center console that goes all the way up to the dash. Uh, I've seen some with just an ashtray in the back for your passengers and then a little thingy uh, up up around the uh, in front of the shifter. Um, 
but I'm not sure. I, there's definitely, and I'm sorry, I'm really not going to be able to show you around here. I should have brought my GoPro, but the big DSLR is like really unwieldy inside the car. There are definitely mounting points for something here, so I'll have to track that down. Uh, it's missing a passenger visor, and the driver visor is all burnt to heck. They didn't expect them to be in the sun, <laughs> the sun visors, I guess. Um, it's showing 72,000, simply because the odometer doesn't go another round. Uh, so I'm assuming 172,000. I honestly, I, I have to look at all the numbers. I'm not sure if that's the original engine. It's numbers matching. I'm not sure if that's the original engine or not. It would be very surprising if it was. Um, but yeah, this is what I got. <laughs> this is what I got. I gotta, I haven't, I, I should probably do that when I get back. I gotta give it a good washing. Uh, it's got some good caked on dirt and grime and uh, just stuff on the outside. So I'll take it out and give it a good scrub down um, and just keep practicing with it around the neighborhood. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough to learn how to drive a manual transmission. It's not like the video games, my friends. Um, but I'm figuring out the slip point. There's no tachometer. That's a little bit of a disappointment. Like, it's not a sports car. It doesn't necessarily need one. Um, in the trunk, there was a whole pile of junk, and one of the things was a separate aftermarket bolt-on tachometer. I don't know where the original owner had it. Um, the original owner was from Wyoming, so a nice dry desert state. This probably accounts for the lack of rust. And uh, the first thing I got to get fixed, though, is the windshield is cracked. Um, apparently they just had the windshield replaced, but they got the new windshield from a, uh, a, uh, what is that called? A, uh, a wrecking yard, a, you know, a dump or whatever, you know, like a, a, a broken down donor car of these. Uh, so don't get the old windshields because they're probably already compromised. So I'm going to have to track down somewhere to get this windshield that's not anything special, um, and have that plopped in. Um, and then just kind of make it a little bit nicer of a place to live on the inside. Um, I'm not planning on really driving it in the rain or around the highways, uh, even though I'm sure I could do that with its five gears. And, uh, it has no air conditioning. The heat works. The heat works. That's also another rare thing. A lot of the heater coils on these old cars I was looking at, the, the Datsuns and, and things like that, they, they all went and are just looped off. Um, it doesn't overheat, although it seems like it would be a good idea to put a new radiator in or, or just, you know, kind of fix that one up or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Might need shocks, definitely the wheels and tires. Um, I think a new seatbelt. This one's kind of frayed. And if it's safe, I just don't like the way it looks. <laughs> I like things to be neat and clean. They don't have to be perfect or stock. Uh, but I like it to be neat and clean. I definitely, speaking of neat and clean, want to replace, remove, do something. I don't know if you saw the big ugly bumpers. In the late 70s, the United States implemented laws for five mile an hour bumpers. Um, so I've seen pictures of the 77 Corolla from Japan, and they've got really nice, stylish, but pointless bumpers. I need to try to track down one of those. That'd probably be the most expensive thing to find. Um, and yeah. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. I mean, uh, honestly, I don't know why I waited so long. <laughs> um, I probably should have done this in Arizona with all those dry Arizona cars. Um, but I appreciate, you know, this is all, it was cheap. <laughs> it was cheap um, in the grand scheme of things, but I wouldn't be able to do this without everybody showing up on YouTube over the past seven years and on Twitch recently and on Patreon. Uh, even if you're not monetarily supporting just the support and the words and the advice, uh, a lot of this comes down to the advice of, of, of our good friend Cone Dodger 240 who uh, you should all be subscribed to as well. Uh, he's constantly building cars, and, and I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to definitely... All the money I saved, I'm going to spend on getting Cone up here to Seattle uh, to help me figure this machine out 
this beast of a machine, this monster of a of a compact car. <laughs> oh, it's so goofy. It's so goofy. It's not goofy even. It's kind of neat. It's just like a small old car. Um, the windshield wipers work. The freaking windshield wipers work. Those never work on old cars. All the motors are all dead. Um, the headliner is okay. It's not sagging or anything. I do need, this is, I need to find a dome light. That's, I found them. Apparently these are, these are very, sorry, this is going to be a long vlog. These are very popular. Maybe not popular, but they still survive and get used a lot in uh, Thailand or Malaysia or both. So a lot of the parts and little doodads like dome lights and handles and window parts and, and stuff like that uh, on eBay all come out of Malaysia. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's fine. That's fine by me. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to drive on the vlog. I'm not comfortable enough with that. Uh, it'll be a huge embarrassment the amount of times I, I stall or whatever, or make very unfortunate. I've not ground any gears. The classic <laughs> you hear when people are trying to learn or don't know manual transmission. Um, I haven't done any of that. It's just more of the <laughs> that's the thing I do. <laughs> None of the <laughs> if anything, I use the clutch too much, I guess. Is that, is that the problem? Um, but yeah, boy, I sure hope this all recorded with the audio and everything, because <laughs> that's going to be disappointing if it didn't. This is, this is, this is the new uh, old uh, Kurt car project. Not even a project, just a, the hobby thing stuff. Oh, that's coming off. Uh, <laughs> good times. I still have the Subaru. The Subaru uh, Crosstrek is still my daily driver, obviously. Um, but uh, this one is the uh, the Joyrider. And the, the learn how to fix up and work on and maybe restore and customize a little bit old Japanese automobiles. And in a year or two, if I feel comfortable enough to where I got this, I can go for something else. Maybe we'll, we will, you know, I know I was, I've been talking about, oh, I really like the Datsun, the 240, the 260, the 280s, and I even was talking to some people about that, but uh, even spending twice as much, the ones I was getting were like, oh, it's got this problem, or oh, it needs a new this and that, or that or the other, or a new uh, radiator, or it's, it's, it ran when parked. <laughs> but this was, this was the sensible choice, and I appreciate you helping me out. Um, oh, that's what I meant to say. The, in addition to Cone Dodger, the Cone Dodger Discord, uh, Z car, um, um, Les Cubes came out and looked at this car with me for the first, when I first looked at it. Uh, and then I went back later and bought it on my own. Um, Les Cubes, much appreciated to Les Cubes. As much as I know you want to ride in this car, <laughs> I, we, we can ride in our old cars. I'll, I owe you a hamburger or something. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes, and I'll keep you updated. I don't know if I'm going to do, I mentioned this on my stream, I'm not going to probably do, like, what Cone does and, like, set up in the garage and, like, today we're going to do this. Just because I, it, it, I, or maybe, maybe I will, I don't know. Uh, but I feel like more of the driving vlogs and more of the, let's take a look at what I've changed, the new wheels or this or that or blah, 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 blah. New exhaust, listen to this, brew. That's the noise it'll make, obviously. But yeah, I've been sitting in this high school parking lot for far too long. <laughs> I'm sure the authorities are on their way. Uh, so thank you so much once again. I can't say that enough. I hope the suspense was worth it. And uh, I will see you next time. Do you want to hear it start up? I'll let you hear it start up. That's probably what you want, right? All right, Ooh, where's my keys? Uh, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Please start up. Please start up. <laughs> it started up every time, for me, at least. All right. Neutral. That thing. Clutch. One pump of gas. Okay, that took a little bit longer than it normally does. But we did it. We did it, everybody. Woo! Oh, the horn doesn't work. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> Gotta fix the horn. Add it to the list. <laughs> I'm glad I waited till now to figure that out. Woo! <laughs>
Out of the way, jerkass. Honk honk. That's disappointing. <laughs> I wanted to beep the horn.